are you all ready to go beyond Plus Ultra? Oh, I thought so, because the voices behind your favorite super-powered students are about to take the stage to talk my hero, Academia! <laughs> so please welcome back to the stage your moderator, London Jackson! Everyone, wow. Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone. I am London Jackson, and I will be your moderator. I am assuming you're all here for My Hero Academia. Yes. Sweet. So we have. <laughs> so we have awesome panelists today, and I'm so happy they're here. Um, I'm going to announce them. Sorry, there's no name tags, but it's fine. You all know them, it's fine. So, <laughs> so we will have up here Justin Briner. Hey! Hey! <laughs> hey. <laughs> we have J. Michael Tatum. Hey! <laughs> we have Justin Cook. And we have Kellen Goff. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> well, thank you guys for being up here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh. uh, there's yes. a lot of you. Yes. <laughs> there's so many. How did you all get in my room? <laughs> so, this, this isn't the first off, I feel like the show has become somewhat of an overnight sensation. The manga sells like crazy, and unlike other animes that have been around some for decades, this is just blown up. Why do you guys personally think from, from working on the show that this particular anime has blown up in the way, and how is it different maybe than the other shows out there, in, in your opinion? Ah, oh, so we're starting with the easy questions. Wow. Right? Yes, yeah. we're yeah. just Keep it rolling. Light. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how many pages did you want that, teacher? <laughs> 500 words. This show is so relatable. The characters in it are human. These are human mm -hmm. stories. Uh, we're not just kind of being uh, rushed into like this uh, world where everybody is so, I don't know, you know, just so fictionalized that it feels cartoony. This right. really feels like humans. They're, yeah, right? I mean, aren't they? I think the reason why it is everybody dresses up and like picks these favorites is that they really kind of see a piece of themselves inside of them. Yeah. Hopefully, we're bringing that to the yeah. to the soundtrack. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I think. I think. Yeah. To piggyback on that, it's it's a show about uh, these very relatable characters who are all kind of coming into their power and learning who they are and where yeah. they kind of fit in the dynamic and and who can't relate to that. I mean, I mm -hmm. I do certainly. And it's yeah. just great to see you know everyone kind of find their niche. I, I, it's wonderful. Yeah. And it's nice to see like a whole world with superpowers because then anybody can be a hero. And that sort that's inspiring to real life, right? Definitely. Even Justin. Yeah, even Justin. <laughs> even Justin. Wow. We picked you last in Dodgeball. <laughs> I can't believe What you. I'm overhaul. Right. Give right. me a break. <laughs> Well, I guess speaking of the, the hero aspect, do you, who are the personal heroes or inspirations in your life? And whether you're a hero or villain, did that inspire your role in somehow to, um, to make each of your characters unique in your own way, your own personal inspirations? I like this. Wow. wow. So deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare sweet. you make me feel something? <laughs> going to make me smear my eyeshadow. <laughs> well, I, if, if, I guess we'll start from this end. My, my hero is and always has been my dad uh, because he, I, I live with autism, I'm high functioning, and he has the same thing. And he sort of, thank you, and he, <laughs> autismo brothers, and he, he, he sort of, uh, he taught me that, you know, just because I'm different doesn't mean that I can't function in the society and excel. And uh, 
He, he, in, he inspired me every day to keep going with school, and he was there 100% of the way uh, for me with um, voice acting. He was supportive all the way. And to this day, we still, you know, call each other every day. I tell him what I did. He reassures me that I didn't do anything wrong, and I do the same for him. <laughs> and uh, we talk about where we traveled that day. And, and um, in that way, he, he didn't really inspire overhaul because overhauls vary the opposite in, right. in, that, in that he's a brutal murderer. But um, <laughs> but he's driven. Yeah, he is driven. We we this is our running gag that we're not allowed to say anything about this new character. But we love that he has a drive and he he has this goal and he just does it by any means necessary. Um, and we like his character design. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. It, it, long story short, my dad. Nice. <laughs> Oh, well, let's see, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a voice actor, and so there's voice actors that I really look up to. Uh, one of them in particular is uh, Scatman Carruthers. If you don't know him, you gotta look yes. him up. Yes. Oh, Some yeah. of the old classics, yes. that's kind of where my heart lives, and yeah, so, too. absolutely Optimus. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anything I can do to kind of bring yeah. that voice into play, but that's, uh, that's who I look up to, and it just, you know, uh, you gotta, and I think that's the beautiful thing. Every single one of you, I hope you got somebody that you can look up to, that you can kind of follow in, in your own dreams, and maybe put it into, into watching how some of these other folks have accomplished their dreams. Maybe somehow that could work, uh, work for you guys. Love you. Yes. Thank you. I, I've had a lot of heroes in my life, but I, I have to, I always feel the need to, to give a shout out to the women in my life. I've been very fortunate to know some very, very strong women from my mother, my grandmother, my sister-in-law, some of my best friends. And man, if everything I know about strength has come from the women in my life. So those are my heroes. Awesome. <laughs> Gosh, so much the same. Yeah, I, I was I was raised mostly by women. Uh, they're, they're, I was inspired by their fortitude and their 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 unyielding strength. Uh, yes. So that's always been a, a big driving force for me. Also, just like entertainers that have have meant a lot to me growing up. Uh, voice actors, uh, Broadway actors, everything mm. like that. It, and anyone who's getting together to collaborate and tell stories is, I think, really powerful, especially yeah. in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think it might also be fair to say that there's a whole room full of heroes here yeah. Yeah. to be inspired oh, yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree with that as well. I'm just curious, did you guys, um, I don't know, almost research your characters before you went into voicing <laughs> them? Did you read the manga? Did you look at the sub? Like, did you prepare? You just went in with the writing and the character just popped out. Just curious. I think I'll, I'll jump in here. My, yeah, my process was, uh, hey, uh, Tatum, there's a character in here with glasses. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, I was like, oh, go home, everyone. This is my guy. Uh, but it was really funny. I, I didn't really know much about the show uh, at all, and I, I usually don't do a lot of research because I try to be just very uh, um, improvisorial with my acting style. I like to not, the less I know, the better, the more real my reactions tend to be in, in the booth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but man. Every time I'd go in and do a session with Colleen, who's just a phenomenal yeah. director. She's shout out really, to Colleen. Shout out to Colleen Clinkenbeard. is just oh, one of the best in the business. Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she was amazing, and we would laugh together, because she, or she would laugh at something I did, and we're watching the screen, we're watching the animation, and I'm like, what? What's so funny? She's like, I've seen you do that exact thing. <laughs> The thing he's doing, I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? I don't do that. There's nothing like me, Colleen. Now, come on, we've got, we've got a timetable here. We have to, you know, yeah. Uh, and I, I, think, I think Colleen put it best when she said, like, Tenya is you in an airport, Tatum. And it's, it's very true. I feel like my research was just coming to the realization that I think that creators followed me around with a sketchbook for an, about an hour, and were like, this is our guy. It's, it's almost embarrassing. I'm like, that's who I am. Yeah, uh, this is an opportunity. I'm going to jump in with the compliments to Colleen, but uh, for myself, no, there's not a lot of research that's involved. The research is allowing myself to kind of give this character and its interpretation entirely over to Colleen. So mm -hmm. I am clay in her hands at the beginning of every session, and by the end of it, whatever we've created, uh, it's I just trust her. Yeah. 
Uh, she really has owned the show and the casting of it. I think she's really looked for uh, the actors that that may even accidentally emulate these characters in real life. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do think a lot of us actually share some things in common with our characters. For example, nice. Rico Fajardo is just Mirio. Oh, yeah. Like yep. verbatim. Yep. There's no difference He's except for just, the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the black eyes. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. For, for me, it, I did not research overhaul at first. But then seeing how complex of a character he was, I thought, Hmm, if this guy encounters something that normal people wouldn't bat an eye to, but he might think is uh, one way or another, I should probably know about that in, in, to give that the performance, you know, that he experienced that. So, I, 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 you know, I, I, read, I read all of it. But <laughs> <laughs> Confessions. <Yeah. Nice. laughs> that said... There are still things uh, that I'm, we're recording with Colleen that uh, surprised me. It wasn't the way I would have gone, but it actually works better. So Colleen is excellent in her instincts, and I fully trust her too. I just, you know, I like to collaborate with her in the mind circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I think many people would tell you uh, that great actors uh, don't research the, the manga or the anime, which means that I am not... A great I'm sorry, actor. Deku. What was uh, that? What was that? So, so I. You want no, to throw down? No, no, no. <laughs> Season I'm, I'm four. Right with, I'm at camp with you, bud. Um, I, no, I couldn't stop myself. Truly, when when we heard about auditions and this show was coming out, uh, I watched like maybe an episode or two of the anime. I, I really identified it with something special. Like they were telling a very unique kind of story with with uh, very profound characters. So. Uh, then I started reading the manga, and I said, "All right, just a few chapters, just to see, just to get a feel for it." Uh, you know, a yeah, hundred right. chapters later, where, where <laughs> everything has happened. Uh, yeah, I can't help myself. So, <laughs> it's like candy, man. Oh, so that good. That story's so good. Well, focusing on each of your characters, could you tell us what you think is your character's best quality and their biggest character flaw? Oh. God, it's like 2020. In <laughs> <laughs> who, who wants to uh, start? Deku has a flaw in that he is selfless to a fault. He will hurt himself and put himself in danger and harm's way uh, to accomplish what he needs to do. And uh, he will hurt himself, brutalize himself, uh, depending on the circumstance. And he's really got to, I think, focus on taking care of himself. A little self-care goes a long way. Um, but as for, for, for what redeems him and makes him so special, Deku uh, is sort of a portrait of, of growing up with, with, uh, with mental health and, and, and trying to, to figure out where you stand in the world and, and struggling with your self-worth and, and people telling you that you can't achieve your goals or dreams, you should uh, set lower expectations, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on. And I feel like, you know, it, everyone struggles with that in some capacity, especially like creative folks out there have probably heard something like that growing up. And uh, I think Deku is great because he gives you a character to root for that you can see yourself in and that you can see uh, growth and change and progression. And, and we're all sort of rooting for ourselves growing up, which is really cool. Nice. Thank you. Uh, I think Tenya is he's a good guy. He he just wants to do right and, and help people. He's a little extra sometimes. He's a bit much. But I think his you know, he's a wonderful person because he's so dependable. I mean he, he will be there in, in he thinks nothing about helping someone else, even at, at cost to himself to some extent. He's not he's not quite the altruist that Deku is. Um, but I think his his flaw is having to learn to trust his friends to not always need him to make sure that they can do the right thing. He has a trust issue uh, with people like, oh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he it's hard for him to believe that anyone else uh, can do right without him there reminding them to do it. Mm -hmm. So he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a, a micromanager in that sense. And I think it just comes from a place of he's not sure about his own worth, so he wants to make sure that he's the one going, hey, you guys know that you have to do this, right? Okay, cool. Thank God I was here. Uh, kind of thing. And, <laughs> and uh, so he's a good guy. He comes from a good place, but that's been his journey, is, is learning how to let his friends take their own journey. Nice. Okay. Uh, Kirishima's redeeming qualities, he's, he's got a heart of gold. This is... <laughs> Hashtag, get that hard 
Hashtag, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Kirishima Cares. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the, the, the trouble that Kirishima's got, and I think Deku shares a little of this too, but he sometimes can't see the, uh, the, the force for the trees kind of a thing mm -hmm. into the details to the extent that he'll forget even to torn, turn the quirk off when he's trapped in the wall. So <laughs> sometimes having a Bakugo there to help remind you, you know, hey, there's the simple stuff. You know, it's good to have a friend like that. <laughs> What's good about Kai? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go well, on. Well, <laughs> well, Kai is a. I, I was talking before. Kai is very driven, and he <laughs> he'll. Uh, he'll <laughs> I don't know what we're allowed to say. Colleen usually uh, glares at me at this point, um, but uh, he'll. You know he. Someone who's that focused on a goal and who's that self-assured, that's the kind of confidence I want, even though he goes about it in very questionable ways. Um, now his, his flaw is not, it's not what, I, I would say that um, his germophobia sort of hinders him a bit too much at times. Like, that's the reason he wears this. And... Uh, he, that's the reason he always wears gloves, too. He, he always has to have somebody fighting for him. He's afraid to get dirty. And oh, down, Colleen down just sent it. me a picture of her glaring at you. Okay. I'll stop there. But, but, but yeah, that, that's what I'd say. And, and now, Colleen, I'm done. <laughs> well, going off of, of your character, Kellen, I... I just, yesterday, I did a panel with Jim Starlin, who created the character Thanos. With, with who? With Jim, Jim Starlin. Oh, Jim Starlin. And he created Thanos. And so I have Thanos on the brain. And kind of looking at your character, I kind of have Thanos vibes. Now, yeah. I don't know if you agree with that, but I feel like goals in the same way is. I Do you see that? Do you, is there a difference between the goals, probably, but... Without spoiling anything, I completely right. agree with that statement. Okay. I, I'd say that he thinks he's doing what's best for everybody. I see. Yeah. Well, and I will say no more, or else right. he'll get I another Right, I know you text. can't... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> All our <folks> <laughs> So, obviously, there are different themes within the show. There, you can, it ranges from actually defining what it takes to be a hero and even living in a almost dangerous society and how to bring tranquility with your powers and things of that nature. Um, what other type of themes can you see in the show that audiences maybe um, can notice or is important to how the show progresses and evolves? Yeah, there's a, a very well-loved episode where in the sports festival, Deku and Todoroki are fighting. You remember that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, they do. Maybe. Right. <laughs> so that has always really touched me very deeply because uh, the, the theme, the overwhelming theme there is that uh, where you are, where you come from, and the circumstances that you are raised with don't determine the kind of person you are. And uh, it, it shows in Todoroki's quirk, it's, it's entirely his own. And he, it, how he makes use of it and to what extent he makes use of it is up to him and no one else. Uh, and he struggles with, I think, the weight of those expectations sometimes. And so that episode is, is watching him become more free and more sure of, of his power and his own personal strength and not kind of having to be beholden to those who came before him. So I just think that's really special. Like for, for folks growing up and watching that, that you are your own person, you are entirely individual and you determine the kind of person that you get to be. I think that's really amazing. Nice. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think one of, it's, it's a theme that, that's revisited in the show a lot, but for me it definitely stands out in the stain arc. Um, that uh, the theme being that the the line between right and wrong is not always obvious, and I think um, that was a really hard arc to be in. I was I loved my character so much, and I, I love Tenya like he's he's me. So <laughs> I, I I have very complex feelings about him, but but I would wrap it up and say I love him. Uh, and uh, watching him go through that and make those choices, there was this moment you know where he had to literally the only way he could in his mind because his worldview is so. Um, regimented. This is right, this is wrong, this, these are the rules, these are not the rules. Uh, in that moment, the only way that he could honor his brother 
was by betraying everything his brother stood for. And that was such a difficult thing that he found himself in that position. And he paid a very high price for it. And thank God he had friends <laughs> who he could trust yeah. to not listen to him. Uh, so that was wonderful, wonderful theme. Yeah, I mean, I'm listening to you guys talk, and what's going through my head, I'm remembering the Yaoyorozu Todoroki, uh, they were team up together, um, and watching the two different things that were happening there, number one, Yaoyorozu uh, kind of discovering her own self-worth, of course she's awesome and we all know that, but her, her discovering that about herself was incredible, but then additionally to that, and, and just as touching to me, was watching Todoroki also begin to see that and how it was that sometimes he can allow himself to overstep, you know, Endeavor style. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so watching both of this, uh, both of these developments, but this relationship even between the, the, the kids, as it were, but between men and women is kind of in that particular theme of how it is you can like, you know, there's a better way to approach things. There's a different yeah. way. And it's sometimes it's not the way that the previous generation might have eased into it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it just, this, this whole story just, I mean, it's it's this huge onion. Yeah. You peel yeah. and keep peeling. Yeah. I love these characters. <laughs> they have layers. Layers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, is, I'm sorry. I was entranced by that. What was the question one more time? <laughs> <laughs> um, what themes do you see within the show uh, that the audience should know or, like, look forward to in knowing the evolution and progression of the series? Um, well, we... In season four, we see everybody really grow up. It even reflects in the voices. And I think, I think uh, in, in that way, it's nice to see the series mature like that, like an actual timeline of a human. We kind of grow up with these kids, and they're like our kids, and that's very special. Um, but a good theme I, is to know your limits, definitely. Like, you can, you can definitely push, but don't end up like, uh, you know, all might completely injuring yourself. I mean, if you need to, if it just turns out that you have to save somebody else, there's nothing you can do, but definitely take care of yourself and know when it's time to, you know, rest. Because in voice acting, if we can draw this parallel, uh, if we scream for eight hours, we should probably not talk for the rest of the day uh, the next day. Otherwise, we'll sound like this for the next session. So, and we also it, cough blood. And we also <laughs> cough blood. Yeah, and that's what ninjoms are for. Um, so, just you know, no, knowing when it's time to take care of you, and and uh, keeping that balance between giving and staying. This is that con public service announcement where we remind you to all take a shower at some point. With the, yeah. I, I love you. I love Stay you. hydrated. And it's, yeah. it's Los Angeles. Drink water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's a fire. <laughs> There's haze in the air. You've got to drink water. <laughs> all of these answers are therapeutic and, and needed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about quirks for a minute. Okay. <laughs> I think that is one of the most fun aspects of the whole series. So I was just wondering if there is any quirk that you could pick, um, either a character that doesn't that you that you don't that your character doesn't have it, or if you would just want one in real life. What is your favorite and why? Well, in the risk of getting away from the serious answers that we've been having, I'm stealing <laughs> one of these. I love this. Karbowski, Brittany Karbowski came up with this one, and I, I use it for the, for the rest of the year. But uh, I would like the quirk to be able to throw a fart at somebody. <laughs> they won't know who it's coming from, but they'll know it came. She did that. Kind of a thing. She, she said that at our panel, too. She's like, yeah, if there's a fighter jet up there, you could just fill that cockpit full of fart, and then... <laughs> 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 That's the quirk. <laughs> I just want to comment on what a treat it's been to watch this person interpret everything you've yeah. said. <laughs> yeah. What is fart? Can you show us fart? <laughs> of course that's it is. So expressive. I'm remembering that's this. Perfect. I remember yeah. that. That's the, and that's that's the quirk. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want that quirk too. But I think I, the answer I often give is I want. Uh, I would love the quirk of never saying the wrong thing. 
Oh my ah. goodness. Which is not the same as always saying the right thing. I'd like the creative room to decide what that is for myself, but I would love to just know <laughs> when to shut my mouth. Get it? <laughs> That's a quirk same. I can use. <laughs> I would like the ability to, uh, whenever I eat something or taste something, I know exactly the ingredients and the and the, the measurements that go into it, so I can recreate it. So many times I have something, just food that's stunning, and I'm like, well, enjoy it now. <laughs> I, my go-to is always electrokinesis, just because... There are so many things you can do with it. You can actually, m thoughts are just electric signals. So you can make people think different things with electrokinesis if you have it honed enough. So yeah, I'll go for that since I can't come up with anything funny. <laughs> <laughs> so before I believe we have a little bit of time to open up a couple questions for the audience, but, and I'm sure you can't say much, but I know there's a new movie coming out and then, and there's lots of new things. So I know you can't give spoilers or anything, but what should the audience look forward to with this new film, if you can? That's non-spoiler. Well, uh, Let me preface this by saying I don't know anything. Okay. Uh, but if I had to guess, uh, if you saw the first movie, it seemed like they really didn't hold back. So I imagine, uh, what I did hear actually is that, that the author, Horikoshi Sensei, uh, used part of what was planned for the end of the series uh, in the movie. So he's taken a bit of that and it's going to be uh, some kind of pivotal story beat there. And he was worried because now he's like, well, now what do I do at the end? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so that should be exciting. Okay. Yeah. Nope. I can't wait. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I have no idea. Okay. I think I'll be right there with you going like, Sweet. What, what happens yeah. next? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. I can tell you that as far as like being a fan of this series, there is no better time than right now. The amount of things that are starting to yeah. converge and come on. I mean, you've got the fourth season that's premiering both in Japan and here uh, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. That's un generally unprecedented. That doesn't happen very often. So, I mean, the fact that that's caught up with each other, that We're there's that a new movie coming up. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, right now, it's there's no better t time to be a fan. So, right. if you know anybody, now is the time to get them involved and have them start binging episodes, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. I did my research. Um, <laughs> a trailer just came out in Japan. And I personally am excited for a person who is coming who has um, wings. Oh my. Oh. 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 I'll, I'll take it. Um, I think we literally have time for one question and then we're out of time. Oh, wow. um, who has the best question? <laughs> right there, yes. Um, yeah. Let's see, do we have a mic? No, you might have to just... Yes. What is our favorite, What's part, favorite about part about voicing, voicing these the characters? characters? Yes. Wow. But what? Tuffy. Tuffy? Tuffy. Yeah. Honestly, it, it's coming out and seeing you guys. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that. Like, seeing how many people like what we do is surreal. <laughs> so, what's that? You guys are sick. What you need. <laughs> <laughs> what you need is a cure. Ooh. Ooh. I got chills. Uh, you know what? I think the fa my favorite part about voicing Kirishima is just uh, trying to catch that energy that he's got. I really just love that. He, everything for Kirishima seems just he's excited to be a part of it. This is awesome kind of a thing. So, yeah, and being here kind of makes me feel the same thing. What's that? That's right, he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's that? I know, right? Yeah, it feels like I'm looking in a mirror. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Kellen. I think the best thing, I think the best thing about any gig we get to do as voice actors is the fans. I mean, because it really is all about you guys. And it's so wonderful. We so often in our careers get to work on shows that we love, but that maybe don't hit as big as we'd wished. So it is so, it is such an honor and a privilege to be in a show that both we love and speaks to us as individuals, as actors and as an audience in our own right, but also that we get to share this love with so many of you who support us. Thank you. This wouldn't happen without you guys. Um, 
I mean, I like to say this, and it's absolutely true. Without you guys, we're just weirdos in a booth making funny voices. Uh, so thank you. It's very validating to know that, that uh, you guys love it as much as we do, if absolutely. not more so. So thank you. It's the, my favorite part of it. Yeah, gosh, you all are amazing. Uh, that I just love, I love telling this, this story that means so much to everybody. I love uh, how, how everyone who engages with it is, is so kind and considerate and, and thoughtful, and it breeds such a, a, a uplifting and inspiring sort of, of viewership. And I, yeah. it's just, that's, it's incredible. Like, this is incredible. So uh, thank you all. It really, it's, it's amazing to be a part of this. Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you to you guys for coming up here and talking with all of us about the show. And thank you guys for coming to the panel. Really, really appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, guys. Go beyond! Plus